Two leaders in the fight against assisted suicide laws, Matt Vallier, the president of the Patients' Rights Action Fund, and Amy Hasbrook, director of Toujours Vivant, Not Dead Yet in Canada, join us now to talk about these expanding laws in Canada. Matt, this issue has created quite a coalition of strange bedfellows fighting for the right to stay alive. What has been your experience and who's a part of this coalition? So for us, you know, we're a secular nonpartisan organization in great part to bring together those disparate and very broad based coalitions. So they range from left to right, secular to religious. So you'll have um, progressive disability rights organizations and individuals as well as um, medical professionals, ethics folks. You have bioethicists in addition to uh, people who advocate on behalf of Latinos and other minorities, while at the same time going holding hands with various uh, stripes of religion, um, from Christian to Jewish and Muslim and even Hindus, um, opposing assisted suicide laws alongside of even people who uh, are atheist, and all because this is not really um, an issue that kind of springs forth from somebody's worldview. Uh, it's not a right-left issue. This is a human being issue. And none of us in the opposition want to see people being coerced. That's where we see these laws um, putting pressure on people to choose death over care and creating a two-tiered system of medicine that results in death to the devalued group. Choosing death over care, well said. Amy, you're on the ground there. You're with Not Dead Yet. Why is this so important for disability advocates? It's important because um, even though pro-euthanasia people claim that it's about people at the end of life, we know that that's not the case. 30 years ago, Tracy Latimer, who was a 12-year-old girl with cerebral palsy, was killed by her father. And there was a great outpouring of support for her father, not for Tracy, but for her father, who killed her because he decided that she was suffering too much even though in fact she wasn't suffering she had there were other medical interventions that could have come along and so the council of canadians with disabilities undertook to try to educate the public about the lives of disabled people and why people with disabilities need to be valued unfortunately that is not the way things turned out and in um though there were several proposed bills that would have uh, legalized assisted suicide and euthanasia. Um, the Supreme Court in 2015 decided that um, despite an earlier decision that said that um, the law that prohibited assisted suicide would protect people and that that was a legitimate uh, goal, the the court decided that um, it violated people's statutory rights to s liberty and security of the person. We believe that disabled people, as the people who are all, um, every person who requests and receives assisted suicide and euthanasia has a disability. And so disabled people, whether or not they consider themselves disabled, are at primary risk and need to be identified as such. Absolutely, and those on the front lines to identify them in that way are medical professionals. What kind of pressure are medical professionals in Canada receiving from government regulators or from their accreditation boards? Well, there's a lot of pressure. Um, just in June, um, when our province, Quebec, had originally adopted its euthanasia law, uh, palliative care services were ex were allowed to uh, refuse to provide euthanasia, but the province just changed its law to uh, remove that uh, exemption. So it forces palliative care services, hospices, et cetera, to provide euthanasia if somebody requests it on their premises. And I am also working on a practice guideline that was issued in March quietly by the health by Health Canada, which um, loosens and further rescinds several of the protections that are supposed to be in the law without benefit of the uh, parliamentary process.
an undemocratic way of getting that uh, passed through. Matt, then what are the options for medical professionals who face these pressures, regulatory and otherwise? So it's it's hard to to navigate a system where the thing is is topsy turvy. You have medical professionals accusing uh, the ones who don't want to participate of being not compassionate when what they would like them to provide is death to their patients. In a scenario where the Canadian government and the other entities and uh, jurisdictions where assisted suicide is legalized. Uh, the pressure to contain costs is immense on doctors. Mm. And so they they need to band together and take legal action, as happened here um, in the US. There are a couple of uh, lawsuits that occurred, one in California, one in New Mexico, and now in, um, in Colorado as well, where doctors are pushing back on these states that have passed laws that require them to participate as simply an an ethical standard. You have right. to give doctors their conscience. That's exactly on that, right. So that, so that patients can have a choice. If you have a regime wherein people only have an option to go to a place where assisted suicide will be practiced, they can't rest assured that their medical professionals are not going to devalue their lives. And that's what many people with disabilities face in the medical setting. That's right. Well, Amy, let's talk about that legal action very quickly. We only have a minute left. In the U.S., we're seeing legal action to protect those who are disabled from laws that would limit access to care. Is there something similar happening in Canada, or is there no legal advocacy happening? There is some legal advocacy on the on the horizon. Um, there is there is an idea that we could uh, pursue the the Supreme Court decision that was issued in 2015, which said that a carefully designed system uh, would apply stringent limits that would be uh, scrupulously monitored and enforced. And that is what was supposed to happen. And our argument is that that is not what's happening. You also are, um, since Canada is a signatory to the con Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. We're also pursuing an investigation, a possible investigation under the UNCRPD. Well, that's important work. Matt, what is quickly the status of the U.S. case in California where disability advocates are challenging California regulations that coerces those with disabilities into using medical aid and dying rather than seeking care? So a lawsuit was filed in April to challenge uh, the assisted suicide law as inherently discriminatory, an ADA violation and a uh, violation of the Constitution. If that law, if that lawsuit is successful, um, it would overturn the California law. Um, yet to be determined, the judge uh, will be coming out with preliminary judgments on motions to dismiss, and we'll see if we'll be able to continue that case and make headway in pushing back on this insidious an inherently discriminatory public policy. Well, we'll be praying for that case, and Amy will be praying for your good work. Thank you both. Thank you. To learn Thank more you, about Monsi. the work that Matt and Amy are doing in their fight to protect patients, you can visit patientsrightsactionfund.org and notdeadyet.org.